to school. Go. Click on the next activity. Pentagon. Pentagon. Parallelogram. Rectangle. Triangle. Triangle. Rhombus. Triangle. 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 Square. Triangle. 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 Make a doghouse with Ivan. Continue. Click on the next activity. Hey everyone, Ivan here. I love to make things from shapes. Now if you're going to make something with shapes, you need to know that there are two different kinds of shapes. There are flat shapes, like this circle. They're called 2D shapes. And there are shapes that aren't flat, like this can. Those are called 3D shapes. The great thing about 3D shapes is that there's space inside of them. So I can open up this can and put dirt inside to make it a flower pot. This 3D shape is called a cylinder. I need a few more cylinders for a special project I'm making. Good thing I built my shape creator. I've made a few adjustments, and now it makes 3D shapes, like this cylinder, out of flat 2D shapes. Let me show you. First, the shape creator will find out what 2D shapes it needs to make a cylinder. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, I see! A cylinder is made of two circles that are the same size and a rectangle that is the right size for the circles. I need two circles and a rectangle. Remember, they all have to be the right size. Wow! We just made a cylinder! You know another 3D shape that can hold things? A cone! This cone can hold ice cream. Let's see what 2D shapes go into making a cone. Oh, I see! To make a cone, we need a small circle and a big circle with a piece cut out of it. To make a cone, we need two circles. Here we go! Look! A cone! If only I had some ice cream. Want to see a 3D shape that I see every morning? It's called a rectangular prism. This cereal box is a rectangular prism. Can you guess what 2D shapes we will need to make one? A rectangular prism is made of six rectangles. Gosh, that's a lot of rectangles! It's important you use the right size rectangles so they fit together. I'll use these two for the front and back of the rectangular prism, these two for the sides, and these for the top and bottom. You know what my favorite 3D shape is? A pyramid. I made this for a school project. Want to see what 2D shapes make a pyramid? See how the sides are triangles? 
That's the way all pyramids are. And this pyramid has a square on the bottom, so it's called a square pyramid. So that's one, two, three, four triangles, all the same size. And one square, that's the right size. This should do it. Can you guess what my special project is? A robot. Time for dinner, Ivan. I'll finish you later. Gotta run. See you next time. Coming, Mom! Terrific! Click on the next activity. Draw it. Draw a pentagon with five straight lines and five angles. Add other shapes to make a picture. Color your picture. Free coloring. Free coloring. Color fill. Color fill. Free coloring. Purple. Undo. Done. shapes and angles. Hi, I'm Shauna the Shape Hunter. Today I went to a museum to see how many different shapes I could find. I started at the arrowhead exhibit. I wondered what shape the edges of arrowheads made, so I counted the sides and angles to find out. The arrowheads each had three straight sides with three angles between the sides. That meant they were triangles. After that, I wanted to find a shape with four straight sides and four angles. That's called a quadrilateral. In the next room, I saw lots of paintings hanging on the walls. All of them had four straight sides. One painting had a square shape, and another was shaped like a rectangle. I also saw a cool rhombus and a trapezoid. Each painting had four angles between the sides, too. All the paintings were quadrilaterals. Next, I wanted to find a shape with five straight sides and five angles. That's called a pentagon. When I got to the rocks and minerals exhibit, I saw shiny gems and crystals in glass cases. I went to the largest case, hoping to find a pentagon inside. I didn't see a pentagon, but I did see a giant red ruby. The edges made six straight sides with six angles between them. I had found a hexagon. The ruby was amazing, but I still wanted to find a pentagon and the museum was about to close. I raced through the rest of the exhibit, but I couldn't find anything with five straight sides and five angles before it was time to leave. 
When I was leaving the museum, I saw a sign that said, Come back soon. I will come back, I thought, because I still wanted to find a pentagon. But then I counted the sides of the sign. One, two, three, four, five. There were five straight sides and five angles. I had found my pentagon. Hooray! You found a prize! Click on an item below to choose your prize and collect your 20 bonus tickets. Congratulations! Backyard Barcraft Project. Rosa was planting seeds in the garden. Hey, look at all these beetles, she called to her big brother Hector. Aren't those ladybugs? Asked Hector, peering at a leaf. Ladybugs are beetles too, Rosa replied. I wonder how many insects are in here. They'll be too hard to count, Hector said. Insects are always moving around. Rosa thought for a moment. I know what to do, she said. She got her mom's tablet computer and took some pictures. Rosa and Hector went inside and began to count the insects in the photos. Grasshoppers, cool, their mom said as she walked by. Ah, mom, said Hector. You made me lose count. Sorry, she replied. Why don't you use tally marks? What are tally marks? asked Rosa. Here, I'll show you, their mom offered. First, you make a table like this. She drew a box with three columns on a piece of paper. In the first column, she wrote grasshoppers. Then she put a mark in the second column for each grasshopper in the photo. One, two, three, four, five, she said. See how you cross the fifth tally mark over the other four? Then one more tally mark makes six. She wrote six in the third column. Hector and Rosa counted all the different insects. When they had finished, their table looked like this. You know, Rosa said, I've been trying to figure out what to do for the science fair at school. Maybe I'll do my project on the insects we saw and use this table. You could also make a bar graph, Hector suggested. He drew two lines, one straight across the bottom of the piece of paper and one at the side. Now you write the name of each type of insect along the bottom line, he told Rosa. After she finished, Hector said, Next, you write numbers on the line that goes up the side. For this bar graph, I'd use the numbers 0 through 20. Rosa wrote in the numbers. Now you make bars to show the numbers, Hector said. Since we found six grasshoppers, you'll color in a bar up to six. Since there were 11 beetles, you'll color in a bar up to 11. Rosa made the next two bars, one for ants and one for butterflies. Now you need a title for the graph, Hector said. Backyard bar graph, Rosa declared. She wrote it at the top of the graph. The next week at the fair, one of the science teachers stopped by Rosa's project. Would you please explain your bar graph? He asked. Well, began Rosa, it shows that my brother and I found a total of 38 insects in our garden. We found more ants than any other kind of insect. We found fewer butterflies than grasshoppers, but fewer grasshoppers than beetles. Just then, Hector walked over wearing a pair of springy antennae. I thought I'd see if you needed any help, he told Rosa. The teacher chuckled. Did you find this insect in your backyard too? He asked. No, 
Rosa said. I found this one in the house. 